Um, really comfortable, you know. I mean, this is the first year that I've had a defense coordinator in a scheme, and then grow over into the next year, you know. So I've had some time to learn and a season of, uh, you know, <laughs> just learn different teams, learn football, offensive scheme, defensive scheme, you know. Um, I'd say I'm a lot more comfortable this year than I was last spring, you know, when it was all really fresh. I mean, last year at this point, I've only had like, you know, what, two months of learning to come out here and try and earn a job, so. You get recruited by one position coach, you transition to another one with a new GA. Now you have another guy, James Lonitis, coming in to help you. Do you feel like you just had so many different minds talking to you about playing linebacker? And uh, how do you kind of sort through all of them? Well, I'd say, you know, you you take a piece from all of them, you know, even um, back when I had Coach Wash and uh, Joe Bolden. Now, last year I had Quinn McFarlane. And, and, uh, Coach Knowles this year, I got James Laurinaitis and um, Sam McGrath. Those are all great football minds, you know. So for me, um, I just try to take a piece from all of them, you know, and then uh, through all that information, try and find what works for me and then take it and run with it. So you named all these guys, but only one of them was a three time all American. What is it like to be coached by James? Now? Well, I mean, it's obviously, it's, it's a, I think it's a huge advantage for us in our room, you know, to have a guy like that to, to uh, be around and talk the game with you, you know, because they've done. I mean, he was like a, what, a nine, 10 year NFL vet, not to mention, like you said, all American here. So it's obviously a big advantage and it's great, really. I mean, it's really enjoyable to learn the game from you. Being a linebacker from Ohio, uh -huh. is that awesome? Yeah. 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 You, you, I mean, everyone in this state knows who James Linus is, but you're a linebacker from this state. That's got to mean something. Well, yeah, I would say it definitely does. You know, I mean, grew up back in the day watching uh, Coach James Linus and, um, AJ Hawk, Schlegel, Bobby Carpenter, you know, guys like that. So, I mean, um, really any of those guys, if you, you have the opportunity to bring them back to coach your linebackers, then it's great. So, Reed, you probably got to college. Um, you probably understood the definition of patience, but did you understand the application of it and how hard it is that first year when you're trying to just, you know, tread water? I'm sure, I'm sure when you came out from Ironton, it's like, hey, here we go. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 it sometimes doesn't work like that, you know? Yeah, I'd say, you know, you definitely have to to um, figure out the definition of patience and really, you don't really find that out until you, until you come here, you know, and you come out of high school and everybody needs to get humbled about that, you know, and there ain't a better place to do it than right here in Columbus, Ohio, so. It can be that way, for sure. Yeah. So how did you handle that? How did you deal with, you know, there, there's some folks that dive in and they emerge as something special. Some mm -hmm. folks hit that and they crumble. Or maybe, you know, they, they transfer. They, you know, they, or they do something else that, that doesn't work for them. How did, it, how did you make it work for you? Oh, I just stayed true to myself and what I've always done. I just, just keep your head down and work. And, man, you just kind of have a blind faith that it's going to work out in the end, you know. And... Um, that's, sometimes that's kind of a gamble, but I'm willing to take my chances. Jim said, Jim Knowles said on Tuesday that he wants to rotate linebackers a little more. What do you have to do right now in the next few weeks to, to prove that that, that spot in the rotation belongs to you? Uh, I'd probably just say, you know, prove to him that, that I know the scheme and I know it well and uh, start making more plays, you know. Just like the same case for anybody else. Just as simple as that. Yeah. You said, you said everyone needs to be humbled. Was there a specific experience as a as a freshman that humbled you that you can recall? I don't know that I would say there was one specific instance. Not really. You know, uh, Tommy Eichenberg, his first two years similar to yours. Is that an example for? Patience does pay off. Like, uh, do you do you look at him as an example? Yeah, I definitely do. You know, um, really, Tommy Steele, Stover, all those guys. Um, it took them a couple years, you know, to get their get their feet in the ground. So, um, those guys are all like big brothers to me here. So, um, I mean, we've had talks about what it's like going through that. You know, and I don't really want to say like waiting your turn. But, yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, I would say that I definitely have looked to Tommy and you know how his situation was and compared it to mine a little bit. And 
I'd say that, you know, sometimes that helps because, um, you know, Tommy's first two years, everybody was like, well, man, can this guy really play? And then, you know, the guy's an All-American now. So. The, uh, without him, chip back at running back, it, more reps available for you this spring for an opportunity to to get to to show Jim Knowles that you know the defense. So, what what can these fifteen practices do for you? Um, you know, I just say really, it's just a, just a learning curve. You know, um, I get to get all the calls back again, and even though it's more fast paced in the spring, you know, you're learning x number of calls for the next practice, and then <laughs> the practice after that. You know, um, but I'd say that. Uh, just getting a good jump start on getting ready for fall camp and just knowing my job front to back. What, what Jim Knowles said you're moving around, so what is your job? Like, you playing some Sam, you do some, do you, are you doing Mike and Will as well? Like, where, where are, are, are all you playing? Where are you playing? Well, um, I played mostly Will so far through the okay. first two practices. Um, I'd say that the Sam thing is still there, uh, but. You know, I don't really want them to look at me as just like I can play one position because um, the Mike and the Will, they're both very similar, just like any other 4-2-5 defense. So. How, how difficult? Is it like starting over every time you get a new defensive quarter or co coordinator or a new, new coach? I mean, has it been like starting over your first two years and then this year is like maybe your like actual second year of the, the same place? Like, how, um, is it, has it been difficult? I wouldn't say that it's so much starting over because, you know, you have things to carry over, like, um, does the guy work hard, you know? Like, they come in here and uh, we get a new defense coordinator, a new coach or anything like that, you know, they're going to want to know their guys, so they're going to ask around on guys who've been here, you know? So um, I'd say that um, learning the scheme part of it and all that stuff and getting to know your coach and building a relationship like that, then yes, it is, um, is kind of like starting over. But I would say that as far as the work aspect of it, like, you either work hard or you don't. Read up. I'm from Huntington, so I'm going to drop some Ironton knowledge on you. Okay, let's uh, hear it. Coach Lutz, mm -hmm. Jamon Jackson, yeah. Coy Bacon. Yeah. You grew up in a place with enormous football tradition and history where it's a super important thing. Sure did. And I'm wondering how that has shaped you, even now that you've been here for a couple of years. Coming from a place where it matters, when you go back home, probably the amount of pride they have in you being here and being a part of this program. How, how did growing up there prepare you for this and make you perhaps more likely to be here, to be a part of this? Go to, coming from a place where football is really important. Yeah, um, I would say that, uh, you know, just it's, it's a small town, man. So, you know, I've known, uh, I met Jermon Jackson when I, was a, when I was a kid. And, you know, you just meet all kinds of guys, like Ken Fritz, he was an All-American here, guard. Um, Reggie Arden played here. Reggie Arden, right. right. Uh, Marcus Williams, he played um, here. Tyler Whaley, known all those guys, you know, for a um, long time. Um, I'd say, you know, it's it's kind of hard to put it into words, really. But, um, just like you've seen guys who've done it, who've came here and been successful and been from a small town and all that. And, um, you know, I just felt like as far as um, – Understanding that it's not going to be easy, but if you keep your head down and just keep grinding and grinding and grinding, then what you're working for will come to pass pretty much. I think, especially like, like we're saying, like where you come from a place where football really, it's really everything matters. Football you know? kind of determines how the whole year is going to go for Iron. <laughs> <laughs> like on and off the football field. Yeah, exactly. But when you when you think about that, growing up in that culture. Did it give you some perspective on football's role in your life? Not only the importance to you and your family, but what it could maybe do for you. Yeah, um, you know, I'd say from a from a young age, um, it was always kind of my plan to work really hard in high school and play well enough, hopefully to to get my college paid for. That's kind of how it started, and then um, you know, I got to high school and had some great coaches and just kept, you know, my love for the game just kept growing and growing. And then I get here, you know, and it's literally football is your life. So, um, I'd say, man, you know, it just becomes, it becomes your life and I don't really know what else to say about it. Reed, does it get frustrating when people assume that you, like, 
will leave or, or that, like you're here because you want to be here and you're working your tail off and like if they don't understand really where you come from and what it took to get here yeah then they really can't possibly understand your mindset now but like how, how do you handle just that outside world? man i just block it out really because people people don't know me yeah you know um and they're gonna say whatever on twitter or whatever it is so i mean i don't really care but um you know i just i like all my teammates here love them really you know and um for me when i hear something like somebody will text me like hey man i heard that you were gonna transfer and i'm just like well, where in the world did you hear that from because i haven't even really given it a thought you know so i'd say that to an extent it does get on my nerves because i take pride in being a great teammate who's 100 percent all in you know like all cards are on the table here here i am you know Turn it away from that a little bit. With James Laurinaitis, what has he brought to this room as far as the teaching aspect, as far as his ability to diagnose things? What has he done differently that you guys didn't have a year ago? Um, I'd say a lot of his, um, a lot of his techniques, um, things like that, little things, little minor details that you know he probably that he picked up along the way, whether he's with the when he was with the Rams. Or when he was here in college, you know, obviously he's been exposed to some great coaches, so his football mind is huge. So um, I'd just say, so far, the little things, you know. Reed, what do you feel like your role can be for this defense this year? Whew. I don't really know yet, man. It's only been two practices in the spring, <laughs> but um, I just hope that, uh, you know, I can be looked at as a dependable guy who's going to know his stuff, he's going to know the game plan, he's going to know the scheme, and if you put me out there, then I'm going to know what I'm doing and I'm going to make a play. Jim Knowles was saying you were doing some of that Sam role a little bit. What's that role like? Um, I haven't really done much of it so far, but um, it's interesting. You know, it's, it's about the same as what it was last year, last season. more than that how do you maybe just kind of you know keep the long-term vision like what do you kind of see that as when you know maybe you're not playing as much as you'd like early on hmm. can you repeat that yeah just like kind of what do you maybe see as your long-term vision when maybe you're not playing as much as you'd like right now mm -hmm. but what it can be a year or two from now well i just think that right now the thing for me to focus on is just keep building trust in the coaches you know i I built up enough trust to where I was, um, I played on special teams last year and stuff like that, you know, and for them to put you out there on Saturday, you know, the guy is doing something right no matter who you are. So um, I'd say that just keep building the trust, you know, with the coaches, them trusting me, me trusting them, and then eventually, you know, I'll be out there and everything I'm working for will, will happen, hopefully. Do you see that experience on special teams translate now when you come out here and you're practicing on defense? 100%. You know, that's kind of that's one of our things that we talk about here at Ohio State. We really take special teams serious, and uh, one of our key terms is it's all ball. So um, everything we do in special teams, the drills and things like that, Coach uh, Coach Fleming likes to say, you know, this isn't this isn't a, a drill to be running down on kickoff. This is a drill when you're running through an open A gap and you gotta meet a linebacker or no linebacker running back in the hole you know for example something like that so it definitely it definitely translates thanks for you appreciate it